Well, thank you all for coming and letting me speak at the uh, Sustainable Energy Talks. My name is Karsten van Asdonk. I'm a student in biomedical engineering here at the TUE. And I think I'm kind of like most of you, I'm kind of an idealist. I envision a future in which all energy generation is 100% green. Now, being this idealistic actually led me to research our efforts to get there so far, and quite frankly, left me shocked with the current state of affairs. Because it turns out that despite we have all these beautiful technologies like wind turbines, uh, hydroelectrics, photovoltaics, they only make up for 7% of the grand total in power generation. And this is indeed a terrible pie chart I made in paint to illustrate this. <laughs> so even in the Netherlands, scientists have calculated that by the year 2050, only 35% of our power generation will be green. And that's accounting for all current projects that are running right now, and even two yet unbuilt nuclear reactors, if you can call this a green technology. And I'm not even going to talk about the growth in oil, because it turns out we're not hitting peak oil at all yet. We're just finding new ways to extract oil and to use it. So this left me with a really important question. Why is the energy transition happening so slowly? And in this research, I found out that uh, many inventors over the last century actually have come up with ideas which can outperform most of the technologies we have today. And I'll give some examples of that right now. You may all know this man. This man is called Nikola Tesla. And in my opinion, he's one of the brightest minds in the history of science. And he has worked on technologies which not only harvest electricity from the vacuum of space, but also to transmit it wirelessly across the globe for everybody to use freely. And just to quote him here, electric power is everywhere in unlimited quantities and can power the world's machinery without the need for coal, oil, or gas. Isn't that amazing? Well, unfortunately, his primary investor, called J.P. Morgan, he eventually found out that he could not profit from Tesla's ideas. So he simply cut his funding at one point, and Tesla died a rather poor man and without the respect he actually deserved. Now, this is just a list of people who have worked on similar technologies, if you're interested and want to do your own research. And I'm just going to name two more examples of this list. Next is up uh, is that of Stanley Meyer. Uh, you may all know of the possibility to run your car on hydrogen gas. You got the combustible mixture of oxygen and hydrogen. You burn it, it leaves you with excess power to run your car, and the byproduct of just tap water, H2O. Well, Stanley Meyer actually found out a way to use tap water as a fuel source by hitting the water molecule at its resonant frequency and thereby very effectively splitting the water in hydrogen and oxygen. And with this, he built a dune buggy with which he could drive from the east to the west coast of the United States on just one full tank of water. And at one point, unfortunately, he went out to dinner with his investors, yes, again, investors, and after sipping his cranberry juice, he grabbed his throat he bolted out the door of the restaurant. He dropped to his knees and cursed that he had been poisoned. And this sounds like something straight from a movie, right? But it's actually real, and you can look up the details yourself. I'll just give one more example, that of the, an actual working device, currently in Switzerland. And to all you electrical engineers, this may resemble an electrostatic Wimshurst machine. Sounds complicated, but this one actually converts the ambient field energy or radiant energy, as Tesla would call it, into usable electricity. And the reason why Mr. Bauman has chosen not to disclose this technology is that he thinks humanity is simply not ready for it yet. And we may soon see why. So this leaves us with a very big question. What happened? Why are we not driving in water-fueled cars? Why are we not receiving electricity from the atmosphere or the vacuum of space freely? Peter Lindemann is an authority on the radiant energy Tesla was talking about, and he proposed four forces, actually. And the first being the banking system. And I know what some of you may think. Oh, here comes that guy with that Illuminati conspiracy theory. No, we're going to leave that behind. So in a free market economy, everybody is free to earn as much money as they like, but only in the form of the dollar or the euro or whatever currency you have. So you're never going to be paid in gold anymore, for example. So if... I would have a system which I can, with which I can raise my own capital with without borrowing it from a bank. The control of this banking system is lost. So naturally, they, try, they do everything to stop this. 
You can even see this in current day technologies, like photovoltaics and wind turbines. They're already, already being reg regulated more and more because of their devaluating capacity. It's even on the cover of The Economist. It's not a big secret or conspiracy. And that brings me to the second force, national governments. Because governments found out that the true policy that actually works is called an eye for an eye. So it's constantly jockeying for influence in world affairs. And it's survival of the fittest, basically. So imagine when one nation or one party in another nation achieves the ability to generate their own power. The balance of power literally shifts from the government to that other nation or party within that nation. And everybody will want this technology, and at the same time, everybody will want to prevent the other from getting it. So to prevent this chaos, governments do something smart. They issue a restriction on any patent or invention that can give an opponent an advantage over the government in power generation. It's called invention secrecy, and it's still going strong, as the Federal Agency of American Scientists says. The third group is actually comprised of the deluded inventors, or fraudsters, if you will, uh, which actually are only in it for the money. So the problem is most of the, these devices don't work. You, YouTube is full of them. And actually, the first two forces use the worst cases of these people to promote the idea that every technology concerning this free energy is a hoax, is a scam. So nobody believes in it anymore. And then there's the people who actually have built a device that works, but they're still in it for the money. And then Shell comes to their doorstep and says, hey, here's a couple of million dollars, go live a happy life, but don't speak about your technology again. So what is a couple of million dollars to a 20 trillion dollar industry anyway? Now, I'm really wondering if somebody from the audience can guess what the fourth force is. What is the fourth force that is preventing this tech from happening? Anybody has an idea? Consumers, exactly. It's all the rest of us, it's you and me. Because you see, the, in the incentives and the motives of the first three forces, they seem so selfish and so narrow, but in reality, we share those same <laughs> motives. These forces are literally just different aspects of the same problem. It's a human one. It's the greed, and it's the fear of competition, and it's that want for power. So in the end, I believe that this revolution, it has to happen within our lifetimes. And either it goes horribly wrong, and we destroy ourselves in the process, or we as a people choose the green transition. And we can nowadays, because we have the internet to form a critical mass and spread the information, as opposed to, let's say, 20 years ago. So that's why I challenge you all to do your own research into this subject, if you are interested, and spread the word because it is up to us to develop this technology that is already there. And the first three forces are not going to help us with this. And I would like to close with this. The true basic need of every human, I don't think it's water, it's not food, and it certainly is not money. I think it's energy. And that is why my hope for the future is a world in which energy is free for everybody. Thank you very much.